Okay. We're here, and there are people here. Fantastic. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'll make sure that I'm looking at the camera instead of how many people are on right now. But it's good to see so many people on on a Monday because, um, to be honest, I wasn't sure, especially with the time change. I don't know about anybody else, but that hit me hard because it says nine o'clock on the computer, but it feels like eight o'clock because of the time change. So thanks for being here. I'm super excited that you came. Um, if you are watching, if you can give me a thumbs up, let me know that the, the audio is working and the video is working and all that fun stuff. Um, and we'll get started because I swear I'm gonna keep it to 10 minutes today. <laughs> I keep going over, I keep getting to about 15 minutes. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. It doesn't seem like we're having any issues. Um, so so I'll just start talking. Um, so yeah, welcome to a brand new week and a brand new chance to get started. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up, fantastic. Um, and a brand new chance to get started on all the things that we need to do. I know that last week was a little bit strange because we're still getting used to this whole staying at home thing. Hi, Emerald, good morning. Um, which, which I mean, I keep saying it. It's it's weird. It's wild. Um, we're take we're being sure to take our our daily outdoor time, especially with the dog because he definitely needs the outdoor time. So that's been helpful. Um, we haven't had to go grocery shopping. I don't know about you guys, but um, we were pretty well prepared. Hi, Nathan. Oh, you can see and hear me. Fantastic. Um, Happy mo six months of this. No, we don't have to do six. Is that true? I keep hearing conflicting reports. By the way, Nathan, did you enjoy your pizza? Um, Nathan was one of the winners for the free delivery for the live stream that we did last week. So he um, got a pizza on Friday. We sent it to him. Um, hi, Caroline. Good morning. Um, oh, it's great to see you all, all you here. That's so exciting. Um, oh, it's having fun. I, I didn't know when I first said that I was going to do this. He says he thoroughly enjoyed it. Many thanks. You're welcome. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so I thought that I was gonna do this for a week. It turns out we had another week left to term. That's fine, I like doing it. Um, but we're, we're focusing more on um, sort of practical stuff to get your writing and your research done this week because I know that a lot of the MA students or master's students, um, maybe six months of this, a lot of the master's students are starting to get ready to do their dissertations and stuff. So I figured it's a good time to start thinking about how to get that process started and get some systems in place now so that you're not super stressed out when it comes to actually doing the whole thing. Because I noticed for me, for with the MA and with the PhD, um, having that stuff, having the stuff like really organized to begin with is really helpful um, because then it's there, it's taken care of and you're not scrambling in the last minute to try to get some stuff done. Um, Caroline, um, yay for Shelly's videos, but no yay for the six month thing. I know it would be weird to do this for six months, um, but I guess that I would be um, on the air. Emerald says the government letters reckon until early June. Yikes. Well, you guys are going to be on break, right? I mean, the PhD students don't really get a break, but the MA students get a little bit of a break for the next month or so. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I do love a Monday, like I said, because it's a fresh start to get things done. I did um, film and up upload, well, I tried to upload. I filmed the, the pre-produced video for last night because every Sunday, um, we're not gonna do a live stream on Sundays anymore. We're gonna do the like pre-produced, nicely edited and shot um, video. So I did do that yesterday and I was like perfectly on my little timeline of getting everything done. And then there was like all, a huge issue with uploading it. Um, so it was, I was, you know, it was supposed to take an hour to upload. I finished editing, editing it at like 4.30. It was like four hours of editing and two hours of filming, but it was fun. It was something to do on a Sunday. Um, and then when it went to upload, it was like, it's going to take three hours. And then three hours later, it went from 100% back down to 24%. So that's going to be up later today. Um, hopefully it's finally uploaded. It's in draft. So I just have to like press the little button, but I figured we would do this first. Um, so before we get into my, I have three things for you to get started, to get done sort of today to get your dissertation process started. But before we get into that, I want you to think of the three goals that you have for this week. So we did this last week and a lot of people said it was really successful. You woke up at five today by accident. <laughs> You're watching the video like, oh, that's fantastic. I'm glad that you actually get to catch it live this time. Um, it's a lot of fun to sort of interact um, and, and get to like chat with you guys. Cause I try to make this good content and stuff that you guys can sort of implement into your lives. But I think the most fun is just to like connect with each other and chat a little bit. And I love that everyone's talking in the chat box. Um, and we have tons of people signed on, which again is really surprising for a Monday morning. So thank you, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so think about your three goals for the week. Um, I know that last week I had the goal to write 3,000 words in the week. Um, I have to do that again this week because I have 
15,000 words to turn in by the end of next month. So, um, so I'm really getting going on that. But a lot of the things I'm going to talk about today are things that I sort of have to do and, and get through when I start you know, writing one of the chapters of my thesis um, or when I was doing my dissertation. So um, if you're a master's student, go ahead and let me know because I, I see a lot of PhD students on, um, but I'm not really sure how many master's students are getting started on their dissertation. So I want to make sure that this is helpful for everybody. Um, and one more thing I wanted to say is that I know there's a lot of stuff going around about um, whether or not you should try to be productive during this time, because if if what is right for you right now is to sit at home and just sort of chill and like get used to this whole idea, by all means, if that's what's right for you, go ahead and do it. Um, but I think that academia is a little bit different, especially when we're going into the stage or writing dissertations or our theses. Um, it's it's really time for us to do the work that we need to do that we would be doing anyway. Um, so it's it's a good time to sort of focus. I, it's a focusing time for me because I don't have to go to all my meetings and stuff right now, which is pretty, pretty fabulous. Um, so yeah, if um, I hope that you are being productive. And again, if you're not, if it's not right for you, that's totally fine. Okay, so the three things that you can do today to get started writing your dissertation or your thesis, um, because it's that season and that's super fun. My number one tip, and this comes with a little bit of a cost because um, the university doesn't provide this program. I, I've been in talks with a graduate school about maybe getting something um, maybe subsidized or getting the program for grad students because it's really helpful, um, but that's Scrivener. So Scrivener is, it's a project manager and a word processor and it's what I used for, um, I used it for my master's dissertation, I'm also using it for my thesis. And for me, it's fabulous because you it, on the side, you can have everything sort of set into folders. So I have a folder for each chapter. And then within that folder, I have subfolders with like the research for that chapter, the bibliography for that chapter. And then I can also break down the actual writing of the chapter um, into smaller bits. But then once you compile it, it's all one sheet of paper. But for me, because I have trouble sort of staying focused on a 25 page document for a chapter or 35 pages, it's nice for me to be able to break it down into section. Like this is my intro, this is the intro for section one. And then I can really work on those little pieces without getting lost in a whole document. The other great things about Scrivener is it has word targets, so you can say how many words you need to get to and by what date, and it will tell you every day how many words you have to write, and then it does this like nice little ding noise when you hit your target. Um, it also manages your references and your bibliographies. It can keep all your research in one place, so you just open up one program and it's all there for you. You're not like going through all the different files on your computer. It's literally just all right there and it's easy to find. You can upload articles to it. Um, PDFs. Sometimes I've even uploaded, like if I go to the British Library and I don't have time to finish a chapter in a book, I'll take pictures of the pages and then upload those pictures into Scrivener. And then again, they're all right there in the research where I need them. Um, the only thing that's not good about Scrivener is that it doesn't, um, it's not a cloud device, so I can't open up different computers to use it. I, I actually bought like kind of an expensive, like really big thumb drive to take from computer to computer. Um, so that I can take it with me and it doesn't get lost. But I wish they had the capability of like a Google Doc where you could open it anywhere. That would be fabulous. Um, Megan says, pictures of pages is a good plan. She has folders of whole chapters on her Mac. Yeah, so that basically what you're doing is what Scrivener does, um, but it's in one program rather than the whole computer. But um, I know that <laughs> Megan started her thesis like a few years ago, so I'm sure that it's not a good plan to, to redo your whole way of doing it. But if you're just starting out, Scrivener is an amazing option. I think I'm gonna do like a nice, pre-produced video sometime soon on all the capabilities of Scrivener and how to use it. Um, when you export the document, you can export all the pieces. <laughs> I'm older than you, Megan. <laughs> you can't say that you're old when I'm older than you. Um, when you export all the pieces, it exports into one doc in a Word or Word doc or a PDF or whatever you need. It'll automatically export it that way. It's just absolutely fine. It, it, it keeps all your footnotes in place. It's wonderful. Um, so for anyone who has sort of like attention issues like I do, uh, that's that's a really good option. And if you have questions about Scrivener, let me know. Um, I'll be sure to answer as many of those as I can. So number two of three is um, to get your readings prepared. So this is a little bit easier if you're doing a master's dissertation. If you're doing your PhD thesis, this is sort of an ongoing process. Um, but, I'll, but I sort of think of it like a chapter. I'll sort of do these things. So the first thing to make sure that you do is that you're creating your polished bibliog bibliography from the very start. 
So that means having a Word doc or having a doc in your Scrivener or Google Docs or whatever that already has your perfect polished bibliographical references in it. And every time that you read an article, take the few minutes that it takes to write that bibli bibliographical information in your polished thing. And then by the time you're done, you know that you have all the things that you used and you're saving yourself the hours of going through all the articles and all the books and making sure that you have everything there and it's that it's right. So do that, have that from the start and just keep adding to it. It's a lifesaver. Then the next thing to do is have a copy of that. So you have like the polished one that's gonna go at the end of your chapter or at the end of your thesis, the end of your dissertation. You have the polished one here that you're working on, but every time that you put something in there, put it onto a copy. So I have like, this is my polished bibliography is what I call it. And then I have my annotated bibliography. So I take that full bibliographical reference and I add it into my annotated list. And in that annotated list, I have the, the bibliography one, but then I have the different versions of footnote once under it. So that when I'm writing, if I use anything from that, all I have to do is copy and paste the right format of that footnote and put it into the paper instead of retyping it every single time. It makes your life so much easier. And then, um, so I have like a running page with like all these different references on it and I have them in bold. And then under that, I have all the quotes and notes from that article. So I can look back and be like, I read all these things and these are all the notes that I took from it. And I have the full bibliographical reference. So it's really helpful. Another way to do this, um, and my, my friend Anna did this from the start and I did it for a while, it's super, super helpful, is to have, oops, sorry, is to have sort of like a database of all your references. And this is just an Excel spreadsheet or a Google, Google spreadsheet. Um, where you have the, the title, the bibliographical reference, your first footnote reference, where you found it, and then like a couple of notes about it. And then the good thing about that is if you have a week where you feel like you did nothing, just go back and look at your database or your annotated bibliography and look at all the things that you did this week. Even if you're not writing anything, if you're reading and thinking, um, then, then you're good to go because that's the biggest part of it. So um, be sure to keep your notes and quotes and your bibliographical references all in one place. And that's easy when you go back to write. Um, so number three, so the final one, because I'm again over 10 minutes because I do that every day. <laughs> um, uh, number three is map out your process. So what you can do today is really think about the entire process of this PhD chapter or your dissertation and start to map the whole thing out. When's it due? Reverse engineer. When's it due? How many words do I have to write? break that down. How many words is that a day? What articles do I need to get to? Um, when will I start to write? Because remember, the reading and the thinking or like the gathering of data is the most important part. Because if you don't fully understand the whole context of what you're writing about, you're not going to be able to write effectively when you get to the writing process. And you'll be surprised if you've done your reading and you've done your data collection and you understand what you're going to say, the writing process goes really, really quickly. So be sure that you're spending a really good chunk of time doing that background reading and, and getting all your sources together. Um, so when you're thinking about that, think about what reading or data you need to collect first where in the process you need to collect that because you're going to have a start date of when you need to start writing, right? Um, and then start making your checklist. So all the little things that you need to do to get your dissertation done, write them all down so that you can check them off as you go. Um, Caroline said it sounds great. Are there any chances that you have an example of your annotated? Sure, I can upload an example of my annotated bibliography. I can totally do that. Um, maybe I'll take some like screenshots or something so you can sort of see what it looks like um, if that's helpful for you. I'm actually going to start a thread in the postgrad group today that has um, every like a place where everybody can write their goals for the week so that we can keep each other accountable. And I'll upload a picture of it to that thread, Caroline, so that you can see that um, if that's helpful for you. So yeah, go ahead and make your checklist of all the little things that you need to do to get your dissertation finished and try to put them in order just because it's easier to put them in order um, at the end of the day. Um, and then once you have an idea of all the pieces you need to get to, all the things you need to read, all the data you need to collect, how many words you need to write, and when you need to start writing, start putting all of that into a calendar. So on this date, I need to make sure that I start doing this part of the process. On this date, I need to make sure that I start doing my writing. And once I start doing my writing, that's 500 words a day. And then by this date, I need to have my draft finished so that I can start proofreading. By this date, I need to start like making sure that my bibliography is in place. Like all those little things, just map out the whole process. If you need to download like a blank calendar, there are tons of those. If you just sort of Google blank calendar for the month and you just have the squares, have one of those that's just dedicated to your thesis or your dissertation process and write down what you need to do every single day. And that way you have a plan. So you're not sort of 
when I first started writing my master's dissertation a couple years ago, I was lost. I was just, I would wake up and I'd be like, I have no idea what to do today. Um, but then once I started thinking about like, okay, this is a whole process that you need to chip away at every single day, just do a little thing every day. Um, and, and that will help you get to that big goal. So anyway, I hope these are helpful. Um, yes, Caroline, I will upload that for you. If I forget, cause I have a couple of things to do right after I finish filming, be sure to send me a message um, and I'll put that up. And um, yeah, so I hope that this helps you sort of get started in your process of getting your dissertation written or your thesis or a chapter of your thesis. Um, I'm gonna start dedicating more videos to those little parts of the process. So this is sort of an overview, but we'll start getting into like really detailed aspects of it soon. Um, so anyway, stay in touch, um, send me a DM or comment below or in the live comment. We have so many comments going on right now, I love it. Um, be sure to comment below. Just let me know where you are in the process, what you sort of need help with, what kind of questions you have so that I know what kind of videos to make for you guys. Um, and, and I'll be sure to, to get that started because I want to make sure that your dissertation process, your thesis process goes smoothly. Mine did not go smoothly. That's a whole story for a different time. Um, and But I want to make sure that yours is better. So anyway, it's Monday. It's time to get going again. Have a fresh week. Think of your three goals. I'll put that thread in. Let me know what your three goals are. Um, and thank you for tuning in. It was super fun. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.